Welcome to Velocity City, where you get to know about all the exciting news and updates about our beloved sport, Formula 1. Today we will discuss the secrets inside the world of F1 champion teams. While we love the thrilling races, have you ever wondered what secrets lie behind the success of top F1 teams? Stay tuned, because we're about to reveal them all. The biggest change to the sport's technical rules that ever took place was in 2022, and with the ground floor effect returning, every club attempted to reach its path to greatness. About these regulations, Mercedes trackside engineering director Andrew Shovlin told reporters that with these regulations, the most important bit is the bit you don't normally get to see. Though only one team was successful enough to accomplish it, and the other teams will scrap their plans and copy the RB19's effective floor as closely as they can. Nevertheless, every leading F1 team's car in Monaco, except for Aston Martin, was elevated into the air, allowing us to see how the floors make the biggest performance difference. Then what do Red Bulls, Aston Martins, Ferrari and Mercedes floors mean? As you are already aware, the floor accounts for over 80% of the aerodynamic performance of a ground effect F1 car. This was a change made in the 1980s, however, the porpoising and the shaky cars basically got it to be made illegal. Since the F1 challenges were not as hefty as they are now, the ground floor effect practically sent the vehicle airborne, which is not something you want to see in a sporting event. But in the modern period, it seems to bring out the best in the team's members. Unquestionably, innovation spectre and the efficiency of the floor are the main causes of the car's downforce, which makes it more agile in slow, medium and high-speed corners. Additionally, it contributes to the creation of downforce on the main straights, which increases the car's stability while braking and accelerating. Two essential elements for a driver to produce reliable lap times. Although the rules are essentially the same for everyone, each team took a different approach to the floor design, and the F1 fans were taken aback by the simplicity of the Mercedes and Ferrari flooring. This was strengthened once we were able to contrast the shortcomings of Ferrari, Mercedes and Red Bull in Monaco. It's important to note that the W14 floor was updated, not the basic one that they were running before this GP. With these regulations, the most important bit is the bit you don't normally get to see, Mercedes trackside engineering director Andrew Shovlin told reporters. So, what distinguishes these floors then? Let's start with the most recent upgrade, the floor of the W14. While many are counting on the side pod design to extract all of the performance from the automobile, Mercedes introduced a completely new mindset to their vehicle. It's the other way around, as a result of what they were able to mount beneath the drivers, they are now far more competitive. The real art of the development process is for us to reconcile these statistical values with one another to such an extent that they create a complete driving experience geared to humans, says Marcus Radel. At first glance, it is obvious how the side edge, or the lateral peripheral portion, tends to be fundamentally and increasingly uniform even though it has components with reduced diverting profiles and slits that are physically distinct from one another. The floor of the W14 would resemble the SF23 the most, not the RB19, if you could compare it to any floor now on the market. The main reason for such is that Mercedes' compact chassis prevents them from fully incorporating the B19 design into their own vehicle. Even though they could have put the side port design on the W14 in its existing shape, if you were to compare the floors of the Mercedes and the Red Bull, the front air profile would be one of the major disparities. Contrasted with the Austrian team's squad, the most recent development of the Mercedes floor, in terms of the Venturi, are conveyors with a distinctly arched appearance. The core component of the channels has become more intricate, and they are now even divided into a central and external piece, which only aids in creating downforce even more. Mercedes has been dealing with this issue greatly with their most recent car model. The newest design of their floor has resulted in more drag and a lack of rear downforce, and the Mercedes is now looking for a place next to Red Bull. Wolf and Allison are sure that this will happen early this year. At Silverstone, the Silver Arrows are adding yet another improvement to the floor of their car in comparison to the SF23 profile, which features channels that are single and unbroken up to the diffuser's throat. Ferrari was one of the teams that faced severe criticism, largely because of the team's simplest mistake. But given that they had one of the most aerodynamic cars in 2022, they unquestionably needed to improve the design of the floor if they were to catch up to more than just the Austrian team. 
However, the two floors in the middle area of the SF-23 floor continue to share a concept with Aston Martin and Mercedes. What I mean by this in terms of the channel's consistent depth is that neither floor experiences any abrupt changes that would cause the channel's depth to increase. This supports the maintenance of their linear fluctuation. The cross-sections of the channels are two distinct universes, according to the channel's main profile. If you were to compare the floors of the Mercedes and Ferrari, you would notice that their vertical development is fairly consistent with one continuous wing profile. This is crucial since it literally represents the biggest distinction between these two contenders. Red Bull's car bottom, known as the RB19's floor, features variances in the channel's cross-sections as well as narrowing that leads to the formation of grooves and expansion zones. However, there are also obvious breaks in the longitudinal profile of the canals. Additionally, it's important to note that the grooves and the expansion section serve as a desired result in determining predictable fluctuations and speed of the underlying flow, which only aid in the construction of a more predictable form of the car. If there is one thing you should take away from Red Bull's floor, it's that there are a lot of interruptions. In reality, we could describe these interruptions as almost dips, in which the flow tends to briefly separate itself before resuming its laminar trend while keeping to the lower profile of the bottom. Speaking of floor disruptions, let's concentrate on two of Red Bulls, one in front of the speaker's elbow and one before the middle of the back. Contrary to popular belief, these disruptions do not increase downforce. However, they frequently lead to a rise in pressure in that particular place, which slows the airflow. However, their primary purpose is to stop the porpoising phenomenon as the floors get closer to the ground. In doing so, they effectively stop the jolts that are caused by the drop in ride height. Basically, more downforce results from the entire process. Suppose this is too complicated for you to comprehend. In that case, Red Bull sacrifices a tiny portion of the load that could be produced by the floor being virtually in contact with the ground, and the goal of travelling with the lowest possible ride heights is unquestionably reached without experiencing the jolting that would otherwise result. These adjustments are precisely replicated in the back of the vehicle to control the same behavior related to the rear axle lowering when accelerating. It is consistently moving between the front and back axles at maximum speed. This only shows how big of an advantage you can have when a guy who was present during the ground floor era back in the 1980s is now the lead engineer of your team. You'd need years to extrapolate and implement this into your own automobile. Since Aston Martin's car was the only one in Monaco that didn't have a journey to paradise, we have yet to see their defect. Given that the whole idea for Aston Martin's 2023 Challenger is drawn from the RB18 and RB19, it is safe to state that their designs is quite similar to that of the Red Bull. However, their recent statement said, We have our own philosophies, and we have our own ways of approaching things. And really, there's a lot of optimization in things like the floor. The reason that you see the details on the surface is because we'll spend a huge amount of time trying to optimize these surfaces. Though if you were to compare all three of the floors that we were able to examine and analyze, Ferraris and Mercedes floors would appear to have the most similarities, which accounts for their proximity and rivalry. However, it appears that the other rivals would need a little more time to learn and master the Venturi channels on the RB19 with the interruptions on their profile and distinct jolts that identify places of high pressure a procedure that we hope will take place this year because Red Bull has undoubtedly set the bar high in terms of being the dominant force on the grid. So, what do you think? Who will dominate this year? Well, I have my answer, but let me know yours in the comments section. And don't forget to subscribe to get more exciting Formula 1 news. Thanks for tuning in, take care, and see you next time.